What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. Joining me today is somebody who you've seen on the channel before, but the last time she was here was around March of 2020, literally at the beginning of the pandemic, two years later, uh, one, one month removed from the time she was on the YouTube channel, but she is back. She is a official in the sport of pro wrestling. I was supposed to interview her in person at the Collective in Dallas, Texas, but she was busy putting in work as always. This is Yali Sapphire. Yali, welcome back to the channel. Hey, it's good to be back. I appreciate you coming back on the channel, man. It's good to see you. Um, for first and foremost, you know, like I mentioned, like I've I kind of been doing this uh, for like the past several interviews or so. Like I caught up with a lot of people that I never got the chance to interview in person. And it's been a minute since we did the first interview. And you are kind of like this, uh, like among the string of people with that. And it's really cool to be able to like actually catch up you know, and, and see how things have progressed, you know, over the past several years. But first and foremost, how's life treating you? How's everything going? You know, how just everything in general? Everything in general is great. Uh, you know, I'm ready for like what the year will bring. I got a bunch of shows coming up, so I'm excited. Life is good. Mm. And, and we had we had literally just talked about um, before we started recording. I wanted to make sure I bring this up. When Yali was refereeing at the Mission Pro Show at the Collective, she was standing in the ring, and I was uh I was on the I was on the, the to the I'm gonna say to the left or the right on a hard cam, and I was like mm -hmm. doing the doing the crossway thing, and and I I, I had saw that Yali had like she she noticed she noticed somebody, but I I figured she didn't put the face to who was doing that, and she kind of was like, who the hell is that that's waving at me right now? Like who, like who is who is that doing this? And I, I felt like that was a funny little moment. And then like you mentioned, uh, you had later like realized that you know you can kind of put two and two together, like you, you know, because I had uh, messaged you previously, so I thought that was a funny little moment right there. Yeah, for sure. Like I didn't forget about you. Like I just like I said, I got distracted before the show. I was like, I bet that's him. <laughs> And, and speaking about that Mission Pro Show, man, um, you know, a lot of talent was there. You know, I had a great turnout. Um, it was like it was a so it was a raucous crowd, man. They came, they came prepared, and they came to see a show. Like you had talents like Janai Kai out there, uh, Shaz and McKenzie, uh, Ali Catch, you know, Thunder Rosa, of course, Holly Dead. Um, you know, a, 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 an abundance of great talents out there. Talk to me about sort of the vibe at that Mission Pro Show, that Bangers Forever show, and and you know the vibe, you know, that you got from the crowd, the vibe from the people in the audience, and just you know how the overall experience was for you. I think it was really welcoming because most of the time the Mission Pro shows are kind of like down in the Austin, uh, San Antonio area. Mm. So it was just great to see so many people turn out in Dallas to come and see our show and to be so supportive. And it was a hot crowd. Like I loved how I always love working in front of a crowd that's very interactive and just excited mm. for the show. And of course, I'm always excited. Like my mm. heart's racing just thinking about it. Mm. And are you like a, are you, a, would you say, is it fair to say that you were like a sort of a regular with, uh, with Mission Pro Wrestling? Yeah, I, I was for the most part throughout uh, the end of 2020 and early 2021. Mm. And then I took some time because all the companies that I used to work for, you know, here in Missouri started coming back. So I, I you know, had to divide up my time with them to, you know, kind of go back mm. to my home promotions. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. And, and uh, further speaking about uh, Mr. Pro Wrestling, man, like I think it's really cool to see that it sort of turned into a, like a touring promotion because I know at first it was primarily just based in, in, in Texas. But now, you know, they're starting to hit different states. And I think that's critical to the growth of the overall promotion. Like, so to speak to me as someone who has sort of been in the thick of it. Um, yeah, I know you said that you sort of not, not all the way taking a step back, but sort of, you know, just to get back into the mix of your other promotions as well. But how cool is it to be? How cool is it, uh, you know, to see, you know, the growth of Mission Pro and, you know, to see it to turn from just, you know, an independent promotion that was solely based in one area to, it, you know, really making the rounds and becoming, you know, prominent and establishing themselves in, you know, in abundance of different areas around the country? Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting to see because you not only do you, those uh, women who predominantly work in Texas get to get out more and be seen by other people, but we've also had the opportunity to, like, pick up other female referees like that are down in Florida or who maybe flew in from uh, Maryland, like Becky Phillips, mm -hmm. who, you know, also worked with NWA uh, with me. So it's just, it's like, it's only getting bigger and better. Mm -hmm. and, and like you talked about, uh, you know, refereeing in the St. Louis area. Talk to me about the St. Louis pro wrestling scene, man. Like, cause I, I, I know like a little bit, like mm -hmm. dabbling in and out, like I know about St. Louis Anarchy and there's like a couple other promotions, like some some stuff that I've seen through like, um you know, Fred Yeha and um, what's the guy's name, Jeremy White, you know, a couple guys uh, down, down in that area. But sort of, you know, br brief people love about, you know, the pro wrestling scene in, in St. Louis for those who might not be familiar with it. And, and maybe even some of the promotions that you work for that, you know, people should probably check out. Yeah, for sure. Like, there's nothing like the fans of St. Louis. Like, they're just mm. 
passionate about their pro wrestling. And then the wrestlers are even more passionate. Like every single time I stepped into the ring or with the promotion there, like everybody was just, just ready to give it their best and show the fans what pro wrestling was really about. But uh, some of the promotions I worked for there are uh, NWA, which was there for their pay-per-view. And then I also recently worked for uh, Black Wrestlers Matter. Yeah. For show. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking about, you know, further speaking about St. Louis, we got and you mentioned it, you know, that uh, NWA and Power Show that took place. What was that, man? Last August? That feels like forever ago like I'm, I'm, it's, it's crazy like now now that i had now that i thought about it like that feels like it's crazy it's crazy how fast time is moving man because stuff that happened like maybe six seven months ago feels like a lifetime like lifetime yeah. ago. But, like that, that nwa power show man um you know it's all women's event um put together by mickey james and you know those are behind the uh, scenes at the nwa like so, so to talk to me about that experience and how cool that was and being in that you know welcoming environment and it seemed like it was just like a camaraderie type feel thing like everybody was there showing love you know it was just like a you know everybody of course was there for the pro wrestling but it seemed like a really just everybody coming together and you know to uplift you know women in the sport of professional wrestling uh, talk to me about that from your experience and you know just how cool it was to sort of be involved in you know in the thick of all that yeah like it was literally an empowering experience because like right off the bat uh, Mickey was so welcoming and so kind like she would speak to you as if you were a friend like she had known you for years <laughs> So it was just like mind blowing, like, oh my God, this woman that I saw as a kid is like right here in front of me, like she knows my name. <laughs> like it was mm. crazy. But like everybody there um was just so supportive. Even the men in the locker room, the male referees, they were just so supportive, so helpful. Like it was just, it was like a family. I say, and, and uh, I know at that event, uh Austin Kong had her surprise announcement of yes. her retirement. And like oh. even even Mickey James was talking about, she was like, nobody knew. That she was gonna come out and do that like they of course they knew that she was gonna like there was a very small uh circle group of people that knew she was gonna appear but they didn't know what she was mm -hmm. gonna say and like and they said yeah. like they said like everybody was just like like okay like she just like announced her retirement like what, what was it what was sort of that scene so, sort of set that scene for me you know as far as you know your perspective and you know hearing the announcement that also kong decided to you know call it uh you know put put, put a bookmark on her on her illustrious and ring career map to you know, so many great moments in the early TNA days. Uh, she had a run at WWE, of course, and, you know, a brief run at AEW. But I think a overall standout career, Hall of Fame career for Awesome Kong. Like, what was it like? So to, sort of set that scene for me, man, in, the, in sort of the backstage area, you know, as Awesome Kong made that, made, that break, made that big announcement. Okay, so first of all, I remember sitting in the locker room and just seeing somebody come in with a towel on their head. And I had no idea what was going on <laughs> and who it was. So at first I was like, okay, that's weird. But, you know, you, you see somebody for so long, you're like, okay, I think that's that person. And then you see them and it's like, oh my God, you of course introduce yourself and it's an exciting moment. But uh, fast forward to the actual moment before she um, announced her retirement. Mm -hmm. Like I remember standing in the locker room watching uh, on the monitor, the whole thing go down. And like, after she announced me, like there was just so much emotion backstage. People were crying. I got teary eyed. Like it was just, like you never want to see the wrestlers that you saw as a kid like retire but like you said she had such a long and a great career and it was just I don't know it was just a magical moment it was just an emotional moment and but I'm glad that I got to be there to witness it and I also had the opportunity to kind of just sit and chat with her uh, after the show was oh, that's over cool. just kind of like talk about everything from like her wrestling career to glow and like just everything she's a, she's an awesome person a wonderful wonderful human being i swear glow is like one of probably one of the most underrated pro wrestling like series so it's a, so it's a great it's a it's a great series man like i'm, I'm kind of disappointed that they got a uh, that they, they got canceled like because i remember that show was like literally i think they were about to start filming like right before the pandemic started and then it just you know, like, yeah. it, it's uh, unfortunate, man. One, one of the many uh, unfortunate things, you know, uh, unrelated to, like, sort of the real world stuff. Like, you know, we talking about entertainment-wise, the stuff that got canceled because of the because of the COVID-19 pandemic, man. But, like, I, like you, you you sort of touched on it a little bit, but, like, so, sort of further dive into, like, the, the camaraderie there um, within that within that locker room there and power. Like you mentioned, there were abundance of different uh, female referees there as well, man. Like, I'm pretty sure that just that overall experience had to be one that you know that's that's going to be one that's probably going to stick for you for uh for a long time and also the prospect of you know mickey james has openly said that they're she's she's had discussions with billy corgan about there being a in, uh in power too and you know august ain't too far away so I, I think that would be sort of cool you know for the for the for them to run it back if you know if, if that's something that would be plausible 
Yeah, that would be absolutely awesome because like everybody there just connected so well. We all worked so well. Like I remember after the show was over, like everybody was just hugging because like yeah. we made history. It's so weird. Like when you're in the moment or when you're, you know, leading up to the show, you're like, oh, it's another show, but it's a bigger deal because it's a bigger promotion um, that has so much history behind it. But like when you're actually like at the end of it, like seeing everything that you've done and everything that <clears throat> you know, all the turnout and all the comments and the Twitter posts and all this, it's like, wow, this is such a huge deal. So if they bring it back again, you know, I, I'm excited for it, regardless of whether I'm on the show or not, right. I'm, I'm excited for it. And they got my full support. And, and listen, I, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm saying this from a, from, from a fan's prospect. Look, I, I saw, I saw most social media reactions to the Empower show than the 73rd. So that, 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 that's all I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just saw, I just saw a lot more people. I mean, both both, show, both shows are fun. Both shows are entertaining. But I saw like a lot of people, man, like on social media tweeting about the Empower show. So I think that was really cool. And I and I know you did some work uh, for the NWA post Empower. I think you did some of their television tapers or one set of their television tapings. I, I believe that was how cool. What was that to sort of be, you know, invited back into the fray, you know, uh, uh, of being back at, at under the NWA umbrella. Well, first of all, that was unexpected. Like that wasn't really supposed to happen. I was oh. just supposed to do the pay-per-view and then go home. So like I got home, I want to say that Sunday afternoon. Mm. And then I got a phone call saying, hey, Billy wants you to come back on Tuesday. Can you make it? Look at I was that. like, oh. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I can make it. So like I had to get my mind back into that mindset. Like, oh my God, Billy specifically asked for me. This, this is crazy. Like, and I also felt a little nauseous. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was just so exciting to be there. And uh, I worked with JTG in one of his matches. And of course, that's another person that I watched, you know, kind of growing up. So it was, it was like, and just, I can't even say the words right now. <laughs> that, that, it was that, just an awesome moment. But I say that, that man looks exactly the same that he did when he was, uh, what was that, like 2005, 2006, when he was, <laughs> he was in the WWE. I'm you, black don't crack. <laughs> black, black don't crack, man, I'm telling you. Like, I, we said the same, like, whenever, we, whenever we're doing, like, a couple of I'm doing, like, podcasts and stuff like that, like, I feel like stuff like that always comes up. Like, we see black wrestlers that, like, we watched, like, you know, as, you know, like, around 2004, 2003, you know, from that, that time period, and we see them now, and we like, man, these people look exactly the same, bro. Like, it is crazy. Like, even, um, <laughs> Uh, Charmel, when she got inducted to the Hall of Fame, she looks exactly the same. Perfect. Like it's, it, it's it's crazy, man. But but I I know like literally like a month after Empower and, and after those uh, NWA tapings that you had worked the Knockouts Knockdown show for Impact Wrestling. Yes. Very very oh cool God. experience, man. Like that Tyler Carr was low, and, and it's kind of crazy because I remember when I was doing some research uh, for this interview, I I had went back and looked at that Empower Car. I mean that. Uh, knockouts knockdown card and like it was kind of cool seeing like what each of the talents is now like how they like whether they still with impact or like they're they doing other stuff like you had mercedes martinez she signed aew tasha steels is a knockouts champion um you know it, it, it was crazy to see like the talent list and like see where everybody which each individual is now but but sort of talk to me about uh you, you know being a part of that knockouts knockdown experience and, and, and like you mentioned I'm, I'm sort of curious like you, you said you had for the you, you know you, you were really uh you know excited about the the, the call to get the nwa the nwa tape it's like was it like sort of the same thing or, or was it one of those things that you like of course i mean of course you gotta you know play i don't want to say play it cool <laughs> But like you know, right. you, you know what I'm saying. But like, was it sort of one of those things? Like, you know, it's, it's, it's business as usual. But like on the inside, you just like, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like I'm telling you, like it was like a dream. Because first of all, I woke up to a text message uh, from Gail Kim saying, "Hi, it's Gail." I was like, "Nah, I'm still, I'm still asleep right now." This is <laughs> I thought about it, and then five minutes later, I look and like I was like, "Oh my god, this is crazy!" They want me to do Impact Wrestling, and I was still kind of um, on an emotional high from working with NWA. Mm -hmm. So I was like, "Oh my god, what is life right now? This is crazy!" And then uh, you get to the locker room at Impact Wrestling, and you see like it just seems like everybody that I hadn't seen before was there at Impact Wrestling in the locker room, mm -hmm. like from uh, Christopher Daniels, Eric Young, uh, just everybody. Um, just just rhino <laughs> mm. christian like everybody it was crazy it was like a dream yeah, that, nah. you know i had that, to i had to play cool <laughs> that's it and, and i know that it was some like it was some like real notable names backstage like you just mentioned like i, I remember i was listening to uh it, it was an interview like around that time and I'm, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head but like 
you know, like, of course, they were on the show, but I know it was a couple like Madison Rain was backstage, you know, like, like a, a, a lot of the like prominent TNA uh, competitors of the women's division, like, you know, back when, you know, during those TNA days, like they, they were, they were backstage at the, at the, uh, at the Knockouts Knockdown show. And like, you had a couple of them that was like being producers and stuff like that, sort of to try and, you know, try different things like yeah, it, it, I heard like some really cool stuff about that uh that that, that knockouts knockdown show, just the overall backstage environment and like seeing people, you know, try their hats with different things, man. And it was a show, you know, that was presented, you know, by, by the likes of, you know, I, I, I want to say presented by, but mostly what I mean by that is like, um, you know, they they, they help run it and they help you know put the whole entire thing together. Basically, is what I mean. And like some more sort of similar to the Empower show, so I, I think that's cool, man. Like I like I mentioned, I heard like a lot of good things about that uh, that Knockouts Knockdown show, and just everybody was like really happy with how you know everything turned out. Yeah, it was crazy. Like uh, even D'Lo Brown like came up to me afterwards and said, "Hey, you did a really good job today." Oh, so look at that! Look at that! I was like, oh, <laughs> and then yeah. like even uh, you were talking about Madison Rain. Uh, also, Chris Saban was like in my ear, both of them like giving me time cues and stuff. So it was it was exciting. It was it was just a jam packed show. And there were I'm not gonna lie, there were moments where I was like, man, I don't deserve to be here. Like I'm just this little nobody amongst these giants. But at the same time, those giants are like motivating you and saying all these kind words about you. It was just a beautiful experience. Yeah, so, sort of moving off of pro wrestling, like it's kind of crazy you say that because I know it's a lot of people like within the wrestling business that sort of experience that like what's that like imposter syndrome. I think I think that's what I think that's what it's called. Like they feel like like even like you 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 would probably bust your ass to get wherever you want to get, and then it's like when you finally get there, it's like ah, do I really deserve to be here? You like comparing yourself to everybody else, and it's like like do, do I like really deserve to be here? Like the whole time, like you really work right. to get to this place. Like it, isn't isn't it crazy how like you can like really push yourself to a certain place. And then like you get to that place, you work hard to get to that place. And then when you get there, like your mind is like subconsciously telling you that you don't like deserve to be there. Right. And I don't know what it is about that. I don't know if it's human nature or what, but like, yeah, it, it can be like that sometimes, but you know, I just always try to hang on to like the positives of a situation and, and, you know, follow that path instead of the the, you know, negative, I don't deserve to be here, Pat. Right. <laughs> but it and definitely that, will cross your mind. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, like, I, it's crazy, like, seeing, uh, you know, you mentioned it, that D-Lo Brown came up to you. Like, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that was, like, I, I know you just said it, but, like, I, I know that had to be one of those uh, additional moments. And, you know, in, in addition to, like, the JTG moment and, you know, getting the call from Gil Kim and getting in the rock with Mickey James, like, seeing these people that, like, because e- even me, man, like, I still, when I'm, like do interviews and stuff. Like when I interview people, I used to watch on TV all the time. Like it's, it's, it's like, it's, I, I, I gotta, I gotta bury that, you know, that this all get nervous. Cause like, I'm, right. you, you see, you used to watch, I've watched these people on TV all the time. Like you sitting there like face to face in front of them. And it's like, like, dog, I, I used to like watch you on TV. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt, but you've been doing some amazing interviews. Like I saw like, oh my oh. God, look at, all these people you've been interviewing I gotta give props to you too uh, I, I appreciate that I appreciate that it, it was cool man like sort of you know expanding the portfolio a little bit it's, it's cool man and I appreciate you for taking the time you know to come back on the channel man it's always cool to have you on the channel but uh like so, sort of further speaking about that uh the knockouts knockdown show I know that happened like what was that I, I want I'm gonna say that was like two maybe three weeks after uh the passing of, of Daphne I want to say and I know that you know, that was a, a real, like, I know that, I, I think the Knockouts Knockdown show was already being planned. That was already happening. But like, I think with Daphne's passing, that sort of just added on, you know, to, and I, I don't want to use the word added on because it makes it seem like, you know, in a dip, but I, I know they really spotlighted Daphne that a Monsters Ball match was a tribute to her. Um, like, mm-hmm. just just sort of talk to me about like, you know, how, how much it was, how important it was, you know, for the people backstage, uh, you guys and the wrestlers to incorporate Daphne's memory, you know, into this show and make her uh, such a focal point, you know, that, that it was. And it turned out to be when the broadcast aired for, you know, people to see. Right. I mean, I think it meant the world to a lot of the women who had the opportunity to not only work with her, but were trained by her. Mm. So it was just a very heavy emotional moment, but I think it was beautiful to be able to do that tribute for her and to have so many people who loved her. Uh, her mom was also there in attendance, uh, but, you know, to, to kind of lift up her memory and to do something great for her in her mm-hmm. honor. Yeah, I, that's cool, man. And, and like, I, I think 
when, especially like around that time, I feel like a lot of people sort of got into the mindset of like really start giving people their flowers while they're while they're still here. Like, and, and I, I especially noticed that around the time of, of Daphne's passing, because it was a lot of even like a um probably like an it was like a, an abundance of like women's wrestling fans that I that I follow that you know really were inspired by Daphne. And, you know, they sort of took different inspirations from her and seeing her, you know, her heyday. So I, I think that was like around the time when people was like, you know, we got to start, you know, why, why, these, why, why these people are here? You got to start like telling them how you feel about them. Like forget like and, and even like I'm pretty sure, as you know, from being in the wrestling business, like, um, you know, I want to say everybody, but a lot of people were sort of discouraged from, you know, hey, don't take that picture. You don't want to look like a, a mark or, you know, whatever it is. Or like, and and the, people sort of have that mindset. But I, I feel like now like that is sort of shifted, man. That shifted like in a in a more positive direction. Like if you see somebody that you that you used to watch you as a kid, man, go take that picture, man, because you never know when you're gonna see them again. You know what I'm saying? Look, so I I, th- I think it's really cool that we sort of sort of changing that that sort of mentality like within pro wrestling of like, oh yeah, you don't want to look like this or you don't want to appear to be like this. Like man, if you like, go go take the picture, man. Like take the picture, take the selfie get the interview, like whatever it is. And even if you don't, just, just go say hello. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause you cause you, you just never know when you might be able to see these people again. So I, I think it's cool that we sort of, you know, that sort of mentality is sort of moving to the, moving to the wayside a little bit. I, I, I think it's good for everybody overall. And I think I think it's also good for you guys, the, the officials, the talent, the staff, you know, to sort of be able to like, w- 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 while being able to do your job and still being professional what you do, while also being able to actually like enjoy what you do and still live in the moment as a fan. Yeah, for sure. Cause I remember uh, when I was still in training, uh, one of my trainers, I posted a picture of myself and a couple other guys that were uh, at the training school mm-hmm. and I posted it on my Facebook page and they told me to take it down because it would make me look like, you know, a fan or this, that, and the other. I didn't care. I was like, okay, exactly. well, if you don't want to see the photo, I'm just going to hide it. So you can't see it. Everybody else could still see it. Right. Like I've never, I've never understood that. Like, if I see somebody that I want to take a photo with or post it on social media, like, I'll do it. Right. Like, I don't. I don't believe in like trying to control what people do or trying to um, tell them how to live their life or how to celebrate or brag about someone that they appreciate. Exactly. You know? Talk to them, y'all. Talk to them. Yeah. Let, let them know. Let them know. But 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 like uh, uh, something I really did want to talk to you about, man. Like you being a black woman, you know, in this pro wrestling space. Um, t- talk to me about sort of the, like the growing diversity. You know, within pro wrestling, like we're seeing, like like we mentioned, more, more women getting involved, more people of different sexualities getting involved. You know, like a, an abundance of different things, different ethnicities. You know, I I think pro wrestling is like really sort of, I, I would say within the last, I'm gonna say like last year or last several years, actually, like I think things are starting to, to be more more on the uptick, and you're starting to see a lot of different people getting involved, which I think is good overall. Like and and, and even reaching that audience, like that's um. That, that's not necessarily within like that pro wrestling bubble that we're in that sort of knows like the sort of quote unquote ins and outs and stuff like that like sort of reaching more people that sort of you know watch on a semi-regular basis and stuff like that just talking to me about like sort of the the, the growth of diversity and, and, and pro wrestling that you've seen from a from an official standpoint and like even you know you being there and seeing these shows and being in the locker room and seeing like the abundance of different talents that are coming in you know from different parts of the world you know that I, I i think i think it's cool that you know, pro wrestling is becoming more diverse and even the audience, man, that's watching is becoming more diverse. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful thing. Like if anything, it's just going to make pro wrestling even better because like people who fit into a certain uh, stereotype or a certain group of people are going to be able to, uh, not stereotype, but a certain, you know, group of people are going to be able Mm. to like show who they are and say like, hey, anything is possible regardless of what you look like, who you love, what you believe in, like, it's just the diversity makes things better all together. Mm. And um, especially as far as like referees, like we're also seeing a change there, um, which is, like I said, it's only going to make things better. I said, y'all, I always want to ask you this. I, I didn't ask you this last time, but like, w- would you have a referee? Would you ever consider a referee in a death match? Like, would you, would you, would you like to, oh, <laughs> oh, have you refereed a death match before? Like, or oh, since we, uh, since we last did the interview? I haven't, but it's, I mean, you know, I've done everything else. That's the mm. only thing I haven't really done. So it would be exciting to do and scary. I, I'm sure, <laughs> but yeah, mm. it'd be exciting. Because I was thinking about the um, when I was at the the Florida Culture Show, uh, Hoodfoot and and Billy Dixon had uh, had a death match band, and I was like, 
right, I, I didn't want to be in the front, but like I wanted to be like <laughs> to the point, like so, just a little cool, cause like they was throwing light tube and like the light tubes was like, the glass you was like flying that. like into the, like near the front, like I'm not, not even near the front row, like past the front row. And I was like, I don't know if I wanted to sit up front, but like, I, I always wondered like what it's like being like a referee in those situations, man. And how you, how you guys will sort of approach like knowing when to pull it back a little bit. Cause I'm pretty sure you, you don't want to get in there and be like, Hey, you got to stop. You know, y'all, you looking a little rough, but like, cause you, you want to let them go. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure you also got to have that thing of like, I got to actually look out for this person. Cause they got it like a whole life, <laughs> like outside of this professional wrestling business. So you like, like, I, I mean, I know you said you haven't been able to do one yet, but like just sort of from your perspective, like even just in a, a regular match or, or, or like a, a, you know, a normal sanction match where things sort of, things sort of get a little messy and stuff like that. Like how, how do you, sort of balance or, or sort of use your own intuition to like, okay, maybe I should sort of, you know, reel them in a little bit. And then also on the other side of that, it's like, okay, I got to let them go. Yeah. I mean, you have to find the perfect balance because on one hand, you know, the people that you're working with, you know, they may be friends, they may be someone that you're really close to. So of course you don't want to see them get hurt. But on the other hand, you have a job to do, they have a job to do, you got to entertain the fans. So for the most part, uh, it's just, you know, just constantly getting in there, checking on them, making sure they're okay. If they're injured, you got to communicate it with their opponent. Uh, and then uh, outside of that, as far as like the fans getting hit, sometimes I do have to tell wrestlers like, hey, if you're going to throw something out of the ring, aim. <laughs> because there have been times where I've seen people throw chairs out of the ring and they dang near like hit somebody in the face. I'm just like, oh, check on that fan. <laughs> like, mm. And then even with hardcore matches, uh, sometimes they can spill out into the crowd and get all over the place. So it's just about kind of like letting people know to back up and, you know, to watch out. So, yeah. But but saying, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> not about saying, sometimes, man, it just be freak accidents, like half the time, like, especially referring, especially referring to those like death match type matches. Sometimes it's just like freak accidents, like, again, going back to collective, and this wasn't a, this wasn't a full of culture show. This was another show I was I, I was at. But like I remember somebody, same thing. It was a light tube. Somebody took it and like they swung it. And I remember a piece of the light tube, like it like flew like into like it, it was it was like in a I would say like it was like seven or eight people, like right there. And the light tube flew and it like hit hit one of the things up the top and it like broke. And I was like, oh, well, y'all dodged a bullet. I was like, cause that that, that could have been so bad. But like it, I'm, it, it's just. I think it just goes to show you in those type of events, like anything can happen, man. So I think it's also about like, as a fan, you got to do some type of due, dil due diligence and be like, okay, where can I stand that I won't get hit? Like, and, I, and like, what, what would be best for my safety? So yeah, I think that's cool, man. But like you mentioned the um the, the Black Wrestlers Matter 2 show, like of course the second installment of that event that took place in uh, St. Louis. I think this was back in February. Um, like Again, I, I'm pretty sure that had to be to just another positive overall experience and, and you know environment to be in. The wrestlers went out there and showed out, man. Uh, I think that show aired on Fight TV. I, I think I think if I'm correct, and I know they got it up like on another streaming service, so people want to go check that out. But sort of talk to me about being a part of uh, Black Black Wrestlers Matter too, man. And, and just seeing the abundance of Black talents in the area, um, and, and and everybody showing out, man, and, and the fans showing out for it as well. Yeah, that was another show where like I got to see people that I hadn't seen in a long time or maybe I hadn't seen since I started out. So it was just a huge, it was, again, it was just a total connection backstage by everybody vibing out. Uh, <laughs> ACH was there. So that was yeah. exciting. I'm like, I don't even get to meet him, but like kind of chat with him a little bit. He's such a great person, so down to earth and cool. But it was such a fun show. And I always have fun at their shows. Mm -hmm. And it, it was cool. Like you, you mentioned ACH, man. Like I, I feel like it's been really cool to see sort of, you know, his post WWE run. Cause I, mm -hmm. I know that towards the end of that, especially with the shirt stuff and, you know, he had like a, a lot of people sort of coming at him sideways, you know, from, from, from that, from that whole situation. So I think it's been cool to sort of see him like sort of re really push all that stuff to the side and like ignore it and like really just sort of re revamp himself and like be back, come back to the ACH that we all, you know, knew even when he was in WWE, like the talking about in ring performer wise. And I I I think it's cool to sort of see that. I, Cause I don't want to call it like a code, like a career switch, because that's not what it is. But like he just sort of pushed aside that negativity and like left it at the wayside and like sort of just, you know, put it put, put it all the way back and kept moving forward. So I, I think it's cool to see him sort of, you know, move move on from from that period of that period of his career, man, to see where he's at now and you know, referencing that uh that Black versus Matter show and all the cool stuff that he's been able to do since then. Yeah, and I actually, I didn't get a chance to tell him this, but like with everything that happened with the WWE and that t-shirt design, 
mm. like <clears throat> it really uh, kind of motivated other black people in the business to kind of speak out about some of the things that we had gone through. And of course, when I did, there were certain people who bashed me, but it's like, he gave us the opportunity to like, just really speak on what's been going on and what other people may not see or, or know about. So yeah, he really uh, was a voice of the people in that mm. instant. And I know it came kind of like with a price and a lot of backlash for yeah. it, but he did a lot for us. Yeah, and, and I, I feel like a lot of people don't, um, well, I mean, I, matter of fact, I, I do think people realize like the sort of the, I guess like for lack of better terms, like sacrifice that 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 that, that was made that was made in that instance. I'm you know strictly referring to you know him having to unfortunately or depart from that job that I'm pretty sure he you know he worked very hard to get to uh to the to the WWE and you know for had to have that whole situation play out. Um and, and I I do think that you hit like a really fair point as far as you know it's sort of so, so, now, I, I don't I don't because I mean I'm pretty sure everybody has everybody has their own voice, but like at the same time it did sort of spark that conversation of like having other people um you know detail and, and sort of go through the, the various experiences like black wrestlers black talent black staff black referees to sort of go through the various experiences that they dealt with you know in, in pro wrestling and I, and, I, and I you know when I when I look back at that like hindsight being 2020 and, and it, it is it's crazy to think about how long ago that was like was that was that pe- that was pre-pandemic right was I think shortly before Jeez, that maybe 2018 2018 20, that, that was probably 2019 20 Jesus Christ that was 2019 because that that was pre-pandemic but um yeah man like seeing how like how things have progressed since then like I I, I really think that like of course from a half sight perspective I think that did have a positive effect in terms of like black people in professional wrestling like no longer doing this like oh standing by idly shit like we're we not doing that no more like and i'm talking about as far as anything like whether it's a comment um you know anything of the sort like and, and even I, I remember um like i i, I do feel like there at, at periods like there is a point where you have a lot of black times professional wrestling that i like sort of get criticized more than other talents like and, and it's like kind of overbearing in a way like even so even something as simple like i remember when sean Merrill got inducted into the hall of fame um, you know, I saw an interview that one of her close friends did, uh, uh, Kelly Kelly, and she was talking about how like Shamil had like an abundance of like people going on her social media pages and telling her that she didn't deserve to be in the Hall of Fame and like all this, you know, and I was like just being like hella negative towards her. And she, and she was like, Shaw, that it kind of got to Shamil and like sort of that imposter syndrome sort of came and she was like, dude, like, do I really deserve to be in the, and, and, I, and I remember I had a conversation with somebody like this. I'm in it. It, it ain't no offense that nobody else is in the Hall of Fame, like because it's. I'm talking about like when you when you look at everybody that's in that Hall of Fame, like I'm talking about everybody. You can make a case for an abundance of people that quote unquote don't deserve to be in there, and I'm like, but y'all singling out this one lady because for what? Oh, yeah, you, you know what I'm saying. It's it, yeah. it, 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 it's a it's a lot of stuff that, that that don't add up, man. But I I definitely think you know, harkening it back to your point that you know what ACH did and what he said sort of. I, I would say like open the door further, you know, for people to just straight up just say what they feel, and I I, I think overall that's a that's a cool thing. But sort of going back to your uh your refereeing experience, Yali, um, like I know last time we talked, you was like sort of going over things that you know sort of the, some of the wildest or craziest things that have ever happened to you in the ring. Like I know you mentioned like some people like diving off of like cages, and you know of course people getting all bloody and stuff like that. Like since then, I'm pretty sure you've had more experiences like that as you've been able to travel the country and stuff like that what, what, what are some of the more it don't necessarily have to be wild but sort of funny moments or you know things that have happened to you or, or, or things that you've been a part of in ring maybe it even involves you know fans doing some crazy stuff because you know fans they, <laughs> they, they they jumping in it too man so <laughs> yeah I mean every now and then like a fan will try to throw something into the ring mm. uh but you know I, I've gotten used to it by now <laughs> Uh, but like some of the crazier things like people have like uh, gotten major concussions bones have been broken Uh, I did one outdoor show I remember where a snake started like slithering outside of the ring yeah it was in the middle of nowhere in Oklahoma (laughs) oh well yeah rattlesnake one of the people it's because it's Oklahoma I guess they're used to it Mm. one of the people that's just like killed it (laughs) right during the match they they said they they must they, they, they had to be used to that like that probably was like oh it's a snake rattlesnake whatever yeah that that, that probably would have been my last day I'd have probably left 
And that had to be right, right there. Because, <laughs> like, I'm a city kid. I'm not used to seeing snakes or even, like, snails and stuff like that. Like, no. It's crazy, man. <laughs> but that, um, yeah, I think for the most part, nothing too extreme but outside of, you know, like, um, uh the monsters ball match that i did for impact wrestling oh. like that crazy yeah like there were thumbs um poured out onto the ring that they were of course you know landing on and they went the thumbtacks went like all in my elbows my knees my feet my uh. shoes so do a pinfall count on that so that was like <laughs> it's like a different kind of pain that you can't prepare for <laughs> so, so <laughs> like I'll, I'll, were, let's say i was i wanted to ask like for for somebody that's like in, like in there with 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 the thumbtack when they're like in your shoe and stuff like mm-hmm. that, I, do, do y'all like like is it do, do you guys make sure to wear like certain shoes that maybe have like thick soles or or is it like do you like immediately feel like that 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 pressure from from the nail like is that because oh my you goodness would, I, I like I wear just uh, regular Nikes you would not believe like because you know the sole is kind of squishy so anytime right. you put pressure on it you're gonna feel that little poke. Like, so when it first, the first time I did a match with thumbtacks, I thought maybe I had like some sand in my shoes. That's kind of how it feels like, like you got a sharp rock in your shoe. And then you look on the bottom and it's just covered in thumbtacks. It's like um, acupuncture that you didn't really ask for. <laughs> I say, cause I, I say, cause I, I remember when um I was watching the, I, what, what match was it when uh, Thunder Rosa faced Big Breaker in the steel cage on AEW Dynamite. And I remember I saw Aubrey Edwards, like they, 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 they landed like right in the, like in the power of thumbtacks. So she had no choice but to come count with the thumbtacks would. And like her arm was just like, boom, boom. I was like, uh, and then she posted, I remember she posted a picture afterwards and it was just like, you can see like the holes that she had to like, I'm like, man, I, I, I was like, y'all, I don't know how y'all do it, man. I don't know how y'all do it. Like, yeah, like after that Monsters uh, match, like I went to, uh, uh, not Brian Hebner, I went to Brian Hebner after the show. I was like, hey, um, I was kind of swiped some of the tags out of the way before I got it. Is that, is that a bad thing to do? Like, is anybody mad at me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, man, because I, I was about to say, you, you having to like slam your hand, like, like, in, mm-hmm. under that. and man, like, I'm pretty sure, like, on top of that, like, when you got to go down and make the count, pretty sure, like, probably hit the knees or, you know the legs or anything like that. I I know that probably got to be like, what, yeah, what, 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 one of those, but one of those like crazy pain. But is it also a thing of like the adrenaline is going, so you're not really like, like kind feeling of. it, feeling it, but you still feeling it. <laughs> kind of because like I wear knee pads in the ring, so like you feel the poke, but at the same time it's like mind over matter. It's like what do I have to do right now? Let me you know do my job. But then afterwards, it's just like dang it, why did y'all have to bring dump? Thumbtacks to the ring, like I'm bleeding right now. I'm about to say, and, and they they went all out in that monsters ball match too. They they but they, they did awesome. Yeah, they they definitely did. They definitely did. But y'all, I want to ask you this, and like this is just you know you you had to answer it yes or no, or you give us like a a, a a detailed answer. But like, have you ever at any point in your career ever ever considered getting in the ring just one time? Have you ever considered it, or like have you ever thought about it? <laughs> Or, or is it like one of those things where you just like, nah, I'm good. You know, y'all can have that. I'm going to stick to what I do. Right. <laughs> I mean, there are moments where like uh, I've gotten to hit a stunner on somebody. I've gotten to like, oh. you know, slap somebody. So those are always <laughs> fun. But at the same time, it's like, okay, I got to go to work tomorrow. I'm not trying to be in pain. Y'all can have that. Y'all, y'all are good at it. I'm good at rough and I'll stay in my lane. It's a good lane. I know I know where the lane turns like now. <laughs> but like when I was younger, yes, I, I wanted to be a wrestler. But now that I'm older, like I'm 32 now, my body's like, hey, just take it easy. Just be rough. <laughs> I about to say, yeah, y- Yali's being very modest right now. Before we started recording, she told me she's doing a death match. Y'all watch out for that. I'd be excited <laughs> to see that, man. But I'm just joking, man. But but but, but Yali, I do want to thank you for your time. Uh, it's always great talking to you. You know, I really wish that we could have did this in person. But you know what, we're going to we'll probably catch you hopefully in the future, sometime in the future, you know, hopefully at, you know, if ever Mission Pro comes to uh, comes to the East Coast or something like that, hopefully I see you there. Or if I see you next year in L.A., you never know, for uh, for WrestleMania weekend down there. So, but y'all, I do want to thank you for your time. Uh, happy, I'm happy to see you making ma- making the towns, man, and all over the place and doing a variety of different stuff. Uh, please, if you got anything to plug, let's get your social medias. Um, Twitter, Instagram, merchandise store link, anything you got, let's make sure we get that plugged. And I'm going to put it in the description of this video. All right. So y'all can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the female ref. 
Uh, and then also, is it okay if I promote some upcoming shows? Okay, so next weekend, I have a Chaotic Kingdom Wrestling in Sherwood, Arkansas. Uh, the Saturday after that, I'll be at New Breed Wrestling in Fulton, Missouri. And then uh, at the end of the month, uh, I'll be working with Randall uh, Wrestling in St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> There you go. There you go. There you go. Make sure you go check out. Make sure you go support her. Go follow her on all the socials. Check out her merchandise store. Go support her. Go cop some merch from the one and only Yali Sapphire. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Andrew Thompson of the Andrew Thompson Interviews YouTube channel. Signing off for Yali. And we are out. Peace.